Hi, sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> Here I am. Um, so you guys all know Bruni. She's um, our a member and volunteer at the center, and we're really excited to have her here today for our virtual book launch. Um, for those of you who haven't read the book and are joining us today, we're super excited. She's going to be doing a special reading, um, and the book is called A Touch of Paradise. Um, and Bruni obviously resides here in Bowmanville, and she was actually born in Germany, and she grew up in beautiful Georgian Bay and has, has lived in Ontario for more, most of her life. And from a young age, she has had the privilege and enjoyment of travel. She loves to travel much like most of you, I'm sure. Bruni has twin sons and four grandchildren. She was widowed twice, deeply in love twice, in love 20 times, and in less 200 times. And I think we all can relate to that, right? <laughs> Very good. All right, so now we're just gonna get Bruni to um, get her book out and she has a special reading to share with all of you guys. Am I on, Chelsea? You are. I'm on, okay. Yeah. First of all, thank you so very much for all of you for being here and supporting my, my, uh, my book. And Chelsea, you and your team are amazing. Thank you for, for um, doing this and being my technical support also, which is one of the things I definitely need. I find it extremely, um, um, I don't know why I find it. It's a lot more difficult than, um, than writing a book actually. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so thank you. And I haven't seen most of you or all of you for over a year. And it's just lovely to, to, to reconnect. Um, okay, so let me read you a couple of um, um, chapters from, um, this is from chapter 12 and chapter 12 is called La Paloma. And um, and I shall start now, okay? <laughs> All right, so we sailed straight across the sound in the direction of Somerset Bridge. The famous Bermuda long tails were gracefully soaring far overhead. Their pure white long feather tails were brilliant against the blue sky. The black markings on their wingtips and eyes were clearly visible from our perch below on the sailboat. I tilted my head back and observed their steady flight with curious interest. They made for life, you know, Mark said, watching me. They live on the open ocean and only come to our shore in March to lay one egg each year. They use the same nest in our limestone coastal cliffs. After they have raised their little ones, they fly back out to the open ocean in October. They plunge to feed on fish and squids and sleep on the ocean waters, their true home. My hand nestled on the polished wooden deck next to him. He took it and cradled my hand in his lifted it up to his lips and kissed the tip of my, fin of my index finger. Sometimes in the spring, we can see them performing their aerial courtships high above. He continued fascinating me. They touch their long tail feathers together while flying next to each other. They are loyal and have only one love for their whole lives. He paused. Chrissy, let's be long tails and fly to the distant ocean and have only one love all our lives. My skin was tingling and his warm hand was still caressing mine. All at once, he started to chuckle at the intensity of his own words. I took my free hand and ran it through his silky hair. I sighed and so did he, and then we were both laughing. Our feet dangled over the edge of the boat and the cool waves licked up at them. The sun was pleasant on our skin and love was glowing in our hearts. 
Moments like these, I thought, are worth living for. You're glad that you're alive and you remember them all your life. And that's from chapter 12. That's really great. Thanks so much, Bernie. It was beautiful mm -hmm. to hear, hear, hear your rendition of it. That's so great. It's nice to hear your voice with your book. That's really neat. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah, so now My we just have, Definitely. So we just have a couple of interview questions to go through, and I'm sure you all will be interested to know. Um, so we have some questions for Bruni. The first okay. question. I'm ready, Chelsea. That's great. <laughs> The first question is, when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Well, this goes back to my early years of being a teenager. You know, when those amazing feelings um, creep into your, your being and, and they have nowhere to go. Um, so I wrote short stories to vent out my emotional turmoil. And that was in my early teens. And I've basically been writing ever since and have, um, um, what was the question? <laughs> That's when I first realized yes. that I wanted to be a, a writer, yes. Yeah, so it's always been something that you've wanted to do, right? Exactly. Amazing. And, all right. and always something I've done, actually. Yeah, for sure. I think we can all relate to that. It's you know, writing and reading or passions, right? All right, right. so the, the next right. question here. Um, so this question is, how long did it take you to write your novel, A Touch of Paradise? Well, this goes, I mean, this is this happened many years ago. So um, I have been writing this first novel of mine for years. Wrote, wrote the first manuscript in, in the, the fall and winter um, after I had been to Bermuda, uh, I was 16 years old when I first wrote the first manuscript. I was 15 the summer I went to Bermuda to visit my brother and his new bride. They lived down there for a number of years. Um, so I had finished it and it had always been there. I put it out in April of this past year uh, when I was stuck at home with the pandemic. So read it, thought it was excellent, and expanded on it this uh, past spring, summer, and fall, and then published it in, in November for my birthday, actually. Amazing. What a, what a timeline. That's, that's really good. Quite, quite a timeline. You don't want to know how many years that was, I think, in actual <laughs> fact. <laughs> definitely. Well, that and takes definitely expanded on it. Um, you know, because I mean, when at the age of 16, you don't write about certain things that I could write about at the age of what I have now. Right. Well, I think that takes us nicely into our next question. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the publishing process and how it all came together? Well, the publishing process is another whole thing entirely. I am the author, not the publisher. Um, first of all, you have to find a publisher. So I was very fortunate in the fact that one of my sons said, do you have a publisher? I, I can do this for you, mother. And, um, and, and he did. So I, I'm very fortunate that way. Um, it's quite the process. Um, it was his first publication too. So between the two of us, we have learned a lot. Um, the second one will be a lot easier. Uh, so the publisher, find the publisher first, then the publisher finds the editor, then the author rewrites, um, then the publisher um, has to format for the printed book and um, also lay out for the Kindle, um, which he did through, which is done through Amazon for, for my, my novel. Um, also, there's a graphic artist involved in the in the book cover. I was fortunate in that respect too, because you can pay like sixty dollars up to six hundred dollars for a photograph for the book cover. However, um, I took my own book cover from one of my own photographs, so that was so much easier. And then um, 
You also have to buy the domain, which is the title and the name of the book. Again, very fortunate because the, um, the name was available. Um, so got very lucky on that one. And um, then by the web page to promote it, put the web page together um, and open a Facebook page for it to promote it. Um, I'm also on Instagram now and all these, like all these little new processes are, are, are um, I'm not used to any of this really. So, so it, it, it has been quite a learning process in the meantime. And um, that would be about it. That's the publishing process as far as I'm concerned. And I really don't want to do any of it. So very lucky that I have my son doing it. Yes. Definitely. It's clear that you're the talent and the brains and, you know, the rest is just, you know, well, I, I don't know about the brains. I don't know about the brains, but I have, I think I do have the talent for it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Awesome. Well, that's, I think, really interesting information for all of us to know. Um, the next question, as you guys can see on the screen, this is Bruni's beautiful garden. And her question is, what is your ideal writing environment? Okay, so um, my ideal writing environment is really everywhere. Um, Writing is a little bit different from, 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 from getting my ideas um, because in order to write, you kind of have to sit down in front of a laptop, right? Or, or, or a computer these days. I mean, um, yes, the manuscript I, I, I did in longhand then I typed it out when I was many years ago, back when I was 16, but, but nowadays it's all computerized. So, um, so basically I, I do get my ideas everywhere, like walking along, um, our our trail in, in our neighborhood, um, um, sitting in my my hot tub during you know late at night under the the under the stars and the moonlight, um, I get amazing ideas. I jump up, I get out of the out of the tub, and I quickly write them down. Then I wake up the next morning and I look at it and. I, I scribble things so I can't even read my own writing. And <laughs> um, yeah, it's been amazing. And of course, also when I travel, I have always written while traveling alone or even with my husband's. Um, I've always made the time to travel and um, um, made the time while traveling to, to write down my thoughts and my ideas and my experiences and my happenings. Um, or else I wouldn't really remember half of them, quite frankly. So, um, and that leads, of course, to to writing more books also. Yeah, definitely. It's clear you like to write everywhere. That's that's really amazing. Thank everywhere you. Everywhere really is the word, everywhere. <laughs> awesome. Well, the next question, as you guys can see, Bruni's pretty involved here at the BOAA. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about what you like to do when you're not writing? Of course. Um, look at all these great photos. Wow. <laughs> I recognize a few of us in there. <laughs> um, okay, well, I love to travel. Like I said, always have traveled, been very fortunate and privileged to have been able to do that all my life. Um, I'm very good on my own, especially since um. Well, I lost two husbands. So yes, yeah, so in, in the meantime, um, I have um, traveled on my own and traveling on my own again now. And um, I find that I meet interesting people. So um, I'm traveling on my own and having new experiences to write about. Um, at home, I love to entertain. Some of you have being here for me to entertain you. Thank you. We'll do it again when this whole thing is over. Um, and we're back to our new semi-normal. And um, and hope you'll be able to, to join me here and let's have some more fun together. Uh, I look after my home and my and my garden. Never consider it work. Always think of my garden as as um. It's, it's a true hobby. It's a true passion also. And um, 
and, and love my gardening and, um, and take true joy in it. Um, I love to read, I love to sing, Alana, right? <laughs> my choir, I love, I love my choir, which is, which we will start up again, I'm sure. The sooner the better, I think, but let's all be safe first. Love to listen to music, love classical music. I grew up with classical music, so that's in me. And I always have music on in the background in my home or um, even away from home, actually. Love to dance and um, um, I think that's about it. Um, dancing, well, you know, quite often I dance at home by myself and that's okay too. Yeah, I, I don't think you're alone there for sure. We no, I don't think I'm alone there either. <laughs> yeah, and, and also, I, I know that you love to volunteer. Is that right? I do love to volunteer. And I just find it gives me, um, um, it, it, it pays back a lot. You, you, I give a little and I get back so much from that. Um, Chelsea, do you want me to talk a little bit about volunteering at this point? You can, yeah. Oh, okay, um, I wrote down a few little things, actually. <laughs> um, okay, so volunteering, yes. Always been a, I have always been a part of my community, have always gotten into my community, which I find very rewarding. And um, way back when, like way back when, I was a beaver leader because uh, of my two sons, then a scout leader. Um, we lived in Thornhill back then, and I was also um, instrumental in the Thornhill Festival and the parade we always had every year at the Thornhill Festival. And, um, and since then, um, in between then and now, um, I lived in Port Hope for 15 years and was um, um, very involved in Port Hope and Hope Township Community Care was on the board for many years, um, was eventually chair and, and, and past chair, and um, always entertained like, like everybody at, 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 at my home. We had a century home back then, which was a big century home with a wraparound veranda, which was perfect for entertaining. So everybody would come over after a board meeting and you know, have some nibblies, have some drinks, and have some fun. Um, also involved in the Horticultural Society, Port Hope Fair, and Northumberland Orchestra and Choir, which I love dearly. And um, I find just the little bit I used to put into that would give me back so much from the volunteering aspect. So would love to keep volunteering. We'd love to volunteer right now, but we can't, can we? That's right. That's right. I mean, it really sounds like you've given back, and I'm sure a lot of those on the call today can agree. You know, we're, we're us at the center. We're definitely missing our volunteers. You guys are the backbone of our organization. But yeah, definitely, it's it sounds like you've just had a, a great passion in helping others, and that's that's huge. And and I must say, at um at the VOA. I love volunteering in the kitchen. I'll tell you where that comes from. Like that kind of goes against my, my um, aura, if I may call it that. <laughs> because I've always, always considered myself a dining room person, not a kitchen person. But my second husband was a really great cook, chef. And um, he used to make a mess in the kitchen like there was no tomorrow, which I always cleaned up after him. Never. Never mind it. Once in a while, I would go on strike and say, okay, that's enough. We have to, we have, okay, enough. I'm not doing any, any more of this, enough. So, so he and the boys would be good for a little while. And then, you know, of course, like everything else, they go back to normal. And, but I, I always cleaned up. I'm a tidy person, always cleaned up after him. So it's amazing what happens because after he passed away, I started missing the messy kitchens that he, would work in and, and make these wonderful dinners and and um and volunteering in the kitchen at the BOAA gave me that gave me that um rewarding experience that I used to have after I know this sounds ridiculous right 
this rewarding experience that I used to have after I used to clean up after him in the kitchen. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I think I think that's truly just a testament to your character, right? That that kind of connection that um, community working in the community gives you. So that's that's really cool. Thank and, you for sharing that. And it's such a good feeling to work there together, and it's a real feeling of community. And the same with the choir; it's a real feeling of community, and everybody makes it work together. Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful. Well, thanks, Brittany. We're going to move on to the next question here. Okay. So this is a picture of you and your son. And okay. the question is, what do um, your friends and family think of your writing? Okay, well, this is a really interesting question because it goes totally from one spectrum of the rainbow to the other. My family, yes. Um, um, no surprises there as far as they're concerned because they have always thought I'm a little bit eccentric and very energetic. So, so nothing surprises them anyway. My friends, however, um, most of them have been totally supportive and, and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, well, Francis, for example, you, you, I mean, even this morning you sent me a little congratulatory message uh, um, thank you, friends. Yeah, definitely. And it's a it's a growing experience, right? It, 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 it is. It's over time. So it it's is yes. to get that feedback from people for sure. Yes. And we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> um, so now, now I just wanted to take a moment as perfect transition. Ah, to... I have not seen this. Yes. So this is um our our friend Frances. She's a member at the center. She's on the call today, Frances. If you want to wave. Hi, that's great. So I was just going to read. Yeah, I was just going to read this testimonial um, uh, from Francis, and it's to Bruni. It says, "Congratulations, my dear friend Bruni, on the re release of your book, Love in Paradise. This is a marvelous achievement, and I am so proud of your accomplishment. Reading your book took me right back to my 16-year-old self with my first bow." The beach was different. Mine was West Coast BC, but you brought me back with amazing detail to the emotional roller coaster of teenage romance with all its intensity, passion, and angst. Once again, congratulations, my friend. So thank you, Francis, for that feedback. That's thank really, really nice. Thank you so nice. much, Francis. This is wonderful. Thank it you. Is. Yeah, for sure. So I just. Now, Francis bought the book before. BOA ever knew about it. <laughs> BOA ever knew about it. <laughs> so thank you, Francis. This is lovely of you. So good. Awesome. So here is the next slide, folks. If you guys can see this picture, it's really cool. There's a gorgeous gal in the corner there. Surprise. This is Bruni in Bermuda at age 15. How cool 15. is that? So Bruni, can you tell us what was one of the most surprising things that you learned while creating your novel? Um, yes, um, absolutely. Uh, that I live in a surreal world, realistically speaking. I do live in a surreal world. I surround myself by things that um, um, I believe are true and real, but really, you know, they're they're, they're not, just to keep myself happy, that's fine. Um, I, I remember also that my friend in high school um, wrote to me a little note that said, to Bruni, the girl who has her feet planted firmly on the ground and her head up in the clouds. And, and I think that's, that's a big part of me and that's really never changed and never will change. And some things as you grow in life change. Other things just stay and will always remain the same. Um, so creating the book, I have also learned that um, writing is my thing. Publishing and um, the electronics of all of this is definitely not. <laughs> That's that's awesome, and I think um, what your friend wrote in in your in your yearbook in high school that's so so true. Um, and anyone who knows you, I think, can relate to that. That's really so neat that you can you know look back on something and and still hold true to something that was 
you know, you as a, as a young person and, and moving you, into Chelsea. your new life. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we just have another one here. Do you have any suggestions to help anyone on the call today or any, any other people who um, want to become a better writer? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I can think of three things. Diligence, determination, dedication. Those Amazing. three things are a necessity as far as I'm concerned. But that can also apply to many things in life, correct? Yes. Absolutely. Um, now, um, one of my neighbors in, in where I used to live um, was Farley Mowat, the famous Canadian author. And when I asked him about writing, he said that every single person has at least one book in them that they can write. Yes, that's so, so relatable. I think that that's such a nice testament and a good piece of advice for you. And then one that you can give to others now, right? Well, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I don't think I'm in a position to give anybody advice. <laughs> But yeah. thank you, Chelsea. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question is, did you always know that you wanted to write this book and, and share the story? I mean, you mentioned that you, you wrote it when you were 16. Yes, absolutely. Um, I always knew that. But, um, you know, we make excuses as we go along in life. And, and I just never had the time or, or made the time um the pandemic put me into that position that um like no more excuses no more excuses i had no more excuses not to to um to to rewrite to to embellish to to publish to finish and to publish yes definitely and i think you know, it's a true testament to who you are as a person, as I'm sure a lot of other people too, you know, you did something during a really, really difficult and troubling time in, in the world um, during a pandemic and you, you took on this huge project. And I think that's super inspiring and we're just so Thank happy you. that you could share it with us. Thank you, Chelsea. Of course, of course. All right, so now we're gonna have another special reading, another favorite reading from Bruni here. Um, she's gonna get prepped and, and share her lovely um, story with us. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Okay. So this is actually from chapter six. So this happens before what I read, uh, what I read before in chapter 12. Um, chapter six is called A Good Omen. It was a lovely day. Thank you so very much. Our eyes met and held for long seconds. Goodbye, Chrissy. He paused, looking at the flowering tree, searching for words. An old legend says when the hibiscus is out of bloom in Bermuda, kissing is out of season. He bent down above me. Through my half closed eyes, I saw his handsome features swimming in front of me. The fresh, masculine scent of him seemed to mingle with salt water and ocean breezes. He sealed my lips with his own. They were soft and warm and yielding to the contours of my lips. Mine parted slightly because he had the most sensual mouth. Our tongues met, daring yet hesitating to push further. It was a rush of pure pleasure. I felt my whole body was tingling and vibrating. This new sweet proximity was breathtaking and I did not want it to end. The craving to explore his beautiful mouth was almost overwhelming, but I dared not venture further. When he stood back, there was awe in his voice as he murmured, 
You never told me you tasted so good. My heart soared. I knew the flush of my pounding heart was moving up the heat of skin of my neck to my cheeks. He was making me feel almost lightheaded. He reached for my shoulder and squeezed it gently. Then he drew away to go and sit on his scooter. Coming sailing tomorrow? I nodded my head. I'll pick you up around one, okay? I nodded my head again. Bye, Chrissy. He was gone. I watched him till the slant of the road hid him from view. I did not go inside, just stood there thinking about him. My hand went up to my face and my fingers traced my lips. Oh my God. I loved him long before his eyes ever found me. So beautiful. Thanks, Bernie. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> so we just have um, the next slide here, just talking to those of you who haven't yet purchased a book. And if you're interested in doing so, we have lots of copies at the center um, and they're available just by contacting us, um, you know, the number, or you can reach out to me at my email address, events at bowmanvilleolderadults.com. And so each copy is $15, or you can get um, a personalized signed copy by Bruni for $20. And Bruni has graciously is going to donate 10% of her sales back to supporting the center as a charitable donation. So we're super thankful for that. Um, and if you're interested after the call today and want to purchase a book, you know how to call us and reach us. Um, so that's the interview portion of our setup today, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and I'm just going to ask you guys all to unmute, um, and I would love to hear some of your feedback, and I'm sure Bruni would as well. Well, I thought it was excellent, and um, I met my husband when I was a teenager and it brought it all back, how I felt and oh, how that's wonderful. lovely things I said and we said, and, oh, I'm blushing now thinking about it. <laughs> anyway, it was, I really enjoyed it, Bruni, it was great. That's so good, we're so happy. Judy, did you have something to share? Yes, I do, because uh, as Francis said, it took me right back to the summer I was in Centralia babysitting my brother's four kids and met the guy I would never have wanted to lose ever, you know, uh, just like, just like that. You just look at each other mm -hmm. and you just know, right? It, it was amazing. Unfortunately, I didn't marry him, but anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you can't go back right but yeah it took me back I can yeah it and us was it was Grand Bend the beach we went to right yeah so wow uh, oh, that's wonderful Judy yeah. yes it, it uh it's exactly what Francis said you just take it right right back to when you're 15 16 yeah yeah, yeah. definitely Thank you. being being in that kind of landscape beaches are very romantic mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Bermuda is beautiful, too. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Gorgeous. We Has went any... there for our 25th anniversary, my husband and I, and it's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. So it is nice. beautiful. Has anybody else been to Bermuda in their lifetime? Oh. Now, does anybody want to go? I want to go again. Yeah. Yeah, me too. We do Bermuda. Okay, Norma, you and me will go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you're on. <laughs> That's so I think I'd rather go with Bernie. She has a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. We'll take Bernie with us. I'll connect all of you, okay? <laughs> Not with each other. You're already connected with each other. You will be the tour guide. <laughs> the next, yeah. The next BOAA troop, tour, trip. Yes, to Bermuda, right? Oh, to Bermuda. <laughs> there is a lovely cruise that goes out of Boston Harbor to yeah. Bermuda. And I did that in August, I think mm, about, we got it. We got uh, at least five years ago, a lot of years ago. Um, and my whole family went again, so it, it was great. Um, but it was great because I, I kind of thought, well, you don't have many stops on this one week cruise. 
but it just takes you to Bermuda, so you're a couple of days at sea, and it parks there, and you've got a floating hotel, and you could get on and off yeah. and go for the next three days. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really, we got to see the beautiful pink sand beaches, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Not very sunburned and yeah, but lots of good. Yeah. That's amazing, Gal. Yeah. Super yeah, cool. it's the cruise, the cruise and you can drive is the best. So, you yeah. know, you know. What about Diane? You're quiet up there. Did you have any feedback or anything you wanted to share with Bruni, Diane Darch? Oh no, I just love the book. So congratulations. Oh, thank you, Diane. It was amazing for you to take that uh, that plunge. It was great. Mm -hmm. Great job. Thank you very much, Diane. And thank you for approaching it, approaching thing the book to, to the boa because that's wonderful to be for, for you I, to do that. Thank you. you don't Peggy and I appreciate what you put in the front yeah, of it too. So thank you very much. Ah, uh, super. <laughs> well, I miss all of you. I miss I mean, this is great to see each other again because we, we haven't been, I haven't been together with hardly any of you for almost over a year well no. well over a year what am I talking about where did the year go yeah <laughs> yeah so it's it's really nice that we we're able to do this I know Bernie you spoke to um you know the troubles with technology um yes. and that we all can relate I'm sure I know I know it's um it's a hard transition but I want to thank you guys so much for coming on today and thank you again to Bruni for hosting. And uh, this is really cool that we can do a book release online. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 Great. I think That's it's awesome. fabulous. Totally fabulous. Super good. Gail, did you have something you wanted to say? Yes. I have a question for Bruni. Um, yes. Some of us have taken the course. It's a marvelous course, writing your memoirs with Cynthia there at the BOAA. Yeah. And um, I took it uh, several times. Still never published my book, however. Um, but I couldn't believe how much it was like going into psychoanalysis or something. Like it was just, um, it was so deep. I didn't expect to get into what it was. Was it like that for you? Um, recalling all, all these memories. Now, some of it you had written a long time ago. I get that. But, uh, you know, I just, I, I think all of us in the class said like, you know, wow, we kind of dug into feelings, how we felt about things that had happened in our lives that right on yours. That we had never given that deep thought before. So well, well, I think I, I have to go back to um living in a realistically speaking, living in a, in a surreal world and and um not letting the outside forces come into it. So it's it's a it's kind of a protective bubble that 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 I put myself into, and um, and the writing also. Um, I I had one very difficult day before, like after it was published, when I realized it went out to you know, it went out to everyone, and I went, oh my god, what have I done? Can I can I can I live with this? Um, um. It's it's releasing all of my yeah. own feelings to the world, basically. Mm -hmm. And that was when I had one day of that when I thought, what have I done? And no, that that's okay, I'll get over that. And then once I had gotten over it, it was fine. Yeah. But um um that was one difficult day, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we all had those moments in the class as well. Like like really do you know did I mean to lay this all out there <laughs> but yeah you kind of move on and get over right it. yeah I right. think that's such a good question Gail thanks for bringing that up I think what Bruni and I have been talking about during this process is just authenticity and how authentic Bruni is to herself and to the novel and in sharing with you guys and um you've taught me a lot about being authentic with myself so um and if you've learned that during the writing your memoirs course I think that's fantastic we're all just doing our best out here right mm -hmm. yeah if, if I may intercede Chelsea for a yeah. moment you must never tell everything though Mm. <laughs> there are some secrets you must never tell and keep to yourself yeah. good to know <laughs> angie keep did you yourself and keep them deeply in your heart never bring them 
to the surface ever. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I was on another call, uh, meeting there, but um, my question is probably strange, but it's something I always wonder when I read books. But Bernie, how did you decide on the names of the people in your book? Like, um, how do you say, oh, the, Chrissy's going to be so, you know, like, the, the, even right the, down the, to the dog? Like, how do you decide what the dog's name's going to be? The, the brother's <laughs> name? Like, the, the names of the people in my, in, in this, um, in this novel actually go back to when I first wrote it when I was 16. So, um, um, the main character, Chrissy, um, all I ever wanted was one little girl in my life. I have two, I have twin sons, or I got two twin, got twin sons. Wanted one little girl in my life and her name was going to be Christine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore it was Chris, Chrissy. Okay. And um, um, the, the name Mark, I always liked even way back then. Um, and I have met several of Marks along the way who have been absolutely fabulous. And, and I, I have to smile when I say that because it's so true. Uh <laughs> I just always wondered that about names because I would be worried that people would be like, oh, well, yeah. that must be named after me or that must, you know, I, I well, just wonder when I read uh, books. And, and, um, and Angie, I did change. I changed only one name in the book as, as I rewrote, as I embellished it and, and, and added to it. Um, because one of the names, um, I know two people two men who had those names and one, I really, um, it just, it just didn't mesh. So I changed the one name to, um, I met this young man at, at one of our banks here and he was fabulous with, to me and he helped me so, so much and, um, and changed the, um, the busboy's name to my favorite busboy, <laughs> <laughs> changed his name to Brett. <laughs> and actually told, Told the young man at the at the at the bank about changing <gasps> changing his name and and um, um, changing his name to you know my favorite bus boy and made a big deal out of it and gave him gave, gave him a, gave him a few um, of my bookmarks which I have many of by the way if anybody <laughs> would like more <laughs> promotion it's awesome a good promotional. Yeah. It's very good for promotions. <laughs> Hand them out to all your friends, please. <laughs> I know there are a couple more people on the call who purchased the book, and I want to give you guys a chance to ask any questions. Arlene, did you have any questions for Bernie or anything you wanted to share? Not any questions, but I must say uh, your reading definitely took me back a number of years, too. I remember sitting on a beach in Freeport watching the, the sunrise. And I'll stop there. I'm looking forward to reading the whole thing. <laughs> That's so good. Thanks for sharing, Arlene. Arlene, you were one of the first ones to purchase the book. Thank you. Oh, my, my pleasure. So through, through, through the BOA. Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Yeah. And then we have Margaret Winslow here. Did you have any questions for Bruni or anything you wanted to share? Well, I haven't read the book yet. Okay. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. And thank you, Bruni. And thank you, Bruni, for your kind words inside as well that you wrote. That was very oh, nice. Oh, my total pleasure. Thank you for pushing yeah. us, or pushing the, the, the novel through, through the, the BOA. Thank yeah. you. So I'm looking forward to reading it. Thank you. It's it's a good read. It's an easy <laughs> read, right? Right, ladies? It's an easy yes. read. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I, so maybe, um, Brittany, I know there are some inquiring minds here, including me, but can you speak to if you will be writing another novel? I will, Chelsea. Amazing you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there will be... Um, I'm planning on doing a series, actually, in, um, uh, uh, and, and this is the, the first novel of the series, obviously. So I um, um, have already started my second one in the series, but it'll probably take about a year. Hopefully, I'll be able to publish it again in November. Um, and um, um, Chrissy, this time will be, or, or sorry, 
Christine. It's not Chrissy. <laughs> Christine, Chris will be in um, um, also again on another beach. It's almost three years later. And um, this time she has two men after her. Ooh. Hot <laughs> thickens. Pardon Just me? keeping us in, in form. <laughs> Did you have something, Fran? Sorry, and then we'll go no, to I'm Judy. just saying, Bronnie, you're just keeping us on the edge there, waiting for the next, the <laughs> yeah. next chapter of Christine's Adventures <laughs> in Loveland. I, really, I found it a nice, easy read because it's been a while since I've been reading. So it really got me reading. And I, I quite enjoyed it. I mean, oh, unfortunately, I never fell in love like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, well, there's time yet. There's yes, time yeah. well. There's, there's hope time yet. yet. There's Life hope is yet. not done yet. <laughs> That's great. Judy, did Life is not else? done. Yeah, I just have a question for Bruni. Now, I'm reading the book and I'm going, okay, this is definitely based on true life, right? So you're... It's a novel. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, come on, no, no. <laughs> They say it's, you got to write on... what you know about. So, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's easier to write about what you know about than writing about stuff you don't know you about. You have to do obviously. all the research. You're not having to do any research, just bringing up all those memories, but embellishing, right? So this is Yes, but I did, do, I did do quite a bit of research just to get everything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind, kind of fiction, kind of nonfiction. Is that where we're going with these? No, it's it's totally nonfiction. Totally nonfiction. Yes. That's yes. so what I thought. Okay, good. Excellent. It, it's in the first. It's in the first person, but it's totally nonfiction. So yeah. Are, okay. are you just saying that because you don't want us to blush? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, no. I, I was a virgin when I was 16 in real life. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to go. Bye. Hi, friends. Bye, Francis. Bye, Francis. Bye, Francis. Bye, Francis. I know we have um, a couple other people on here. Did anybody else want to share? I think Rochelle's here. I'll ask you to unmute if you want and to speak. Um, I wanted to know from Bernie, uh, what did his her parents originally think about her writing at 16 years old? Did they encourage it or did they say, no, 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 you've got to have a real job? Or did they well, just they, not know? Well, well, they never, or did they, they just not um, know? Right. <laughs> I basically wrote it at night. <laughs> yeah. oh. However, I did, I did, um, they did buy me a, um, a typewriter, which was fabulous. Um, okay. So I had a typewriter at the age of 16 and um, um, so they were always very encouraging with anything that I, I wanted to do really. Um, um, yes. And yes, they were encouraging. Um, oh, I never good. told them I wanted to be a writer because that was too personal for me. But, you know, they knew I, I my, my father was was a poet and, and, and a writer of short oh. stories. And, and that's where, I think that's where I get that part of me from. Um, yeah. My mother was the disciplinarian and the, the strong one in the household. And, and it was my father who, who had the imagination and, and oh, good. Um, all that. So you come by it honestly. I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> that's yes. good. Thanks, yeah. Rochelle. I don't. I know there's a few more people on the call too. Janet, did you have a chance to read the book, or do you have any? Questions? No, I haven't yet. I've been okay. hiding in my own little shell here, so uh, that's okay. I will get it. And I did know that. I guess because Bruni and I got together socially distancing last summer. Last summer. Remember? Yeah, it's a long time ago, isn't it? Because we sat out in your garden. Exactly. And had some lovely wine very early in the morning. It was really nice. Um, I think that short visit was about four hours. So I did know that that uh, that she was busy working on it and that. And so now, yes, I do an email and let you know and then uh, pick it up. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm sure you're looking forward to it. That's great. I, I am. I am. Good. 
Um, what about Linda? Linda, did you have any questions that you wanted to ask Bruni or anything you wanted to say at all? You're just gonna have to unmute there, my friend. Linda's been very quiet. Oh, that she is. Yeah. I was surprised to learn that Bruni wrote. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you? You've been very quiet. <laughs> Gotten used to nobody to talk to, so I don't have well, to talk very often. Well, Linda, Linda, you should know by now that I'm full of surprises. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> that one was a real surprise, but it sounds very interesting. I'll have to get it. <laughs> How are you doing, Linda? Fine? Are you fine? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I've been Good. by your place like, several times walking, but I can't remember which house is yours. <laughs> 62. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Okay. 62. Yeah, I, I walk a lot too. That's good. Well, thanks, Linda. Thanks for sharing. I know, um, Francis, have you had a chance to say anything? I know you had your amazing testimonial, but was there any, any other questions you have for Bruni or anything you wanted to share? No, just congratulations. To do something like that, to, to put yourself out there, to write, to go through the process of writing and rewriting and then working with the just getting it published that's a huge accomplishment it's the kind of thing that i mean i i can't even dream of doing something like that and you've done it and i'm just delighted for you i really uh, am Francis, thank you and and all i could think of was i wonder what your big brother and or Chrissy's big brother and sister-in-law were thinking. Because I know <laughs> I was, when I was out west, I was visiting my grandmother, and I'm sure I drove her crazy with worry. She was very, very <laughs> worried about my virtue. So <laughs> yes, that's funny. <laughs> that that's why your book just went, oh, yep, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you francis <laughs> that's awesome. wonderful well Ch i think Ch chelsea yeah. shall we talk about the german book for yeah, a moment i was and, just gonna see if and also the audio definitely i was just gonna see if alana had any any feedback or any questions for you or no i just think it's amazing i just think and i'll have to read it i just We'll get there. Yeah, I haven't read it. Alana, but I thank will. you. It's wonderful, Bruni. What a great accomplishment. Thank you, Alana. Let's get that choir back. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> hey, Bruni, congratulations. Yeah, there. Uh, thank you. Hi, Tim. How Hi. are you? <laughs> I have a question for you. Who checked the spelling? <laughs> the spelling. <laughs> spell check. It's spell check. There you go. Anyway, I have to go because I have another event going on this no afternoon. Oh, look at your puppies. Just me. Just me. No worries. Bye, Francis. Bye, Tim. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye, Francis. Bye, Tim. Love you, too. Bye, Wednesday. Bye-bye. Hi, Steve. How are Hi, you? Hi, Steve. Yeah. Awesome. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. I'm a little jealous of what you've accomplished. That's amazing. No. Yes, it is. Oh, thank you. Thank well you done. so much. Thank you. That's really cool. Yeah, so we, we do have a couple other discussion pieces to bring up. Um, I know Bernie's been um, active and, and trying to, you know, promote this amazing accomplishment. So you're on Amazon. And um, you have an audio book. And what's the newest venture you're taking with um, A Touch of Paradise? Uh, actually, um, audio book is not done yet. Okay. <laughs> um, the Kindle. The book is done and, and it's on Kindle yeah. um, without any problem. The audio book, um, it took me two weeks to... to um, I, I did the audiobook, so like it's the author who it's the author who who um um yes who who read the audiobook, but um um and it took me two weeks to do that, and um but it is presently held up because um the audio engineer because you need an audio engineer to do that, um the audio engineer is presently um 
booked and behind for about two more months. So it won't happen till about two mm. months or three months from now. And I think always like two months is probably three months, you know. Mm. Um, so that so the audio book will come out though, however. Good. Um, and then then I have the German book coming out. The, oh, wow. the, the, the book in German. Um, being born in Germany, I am fluent in German. It took me two months to translate, however. Like it was a it was painful, believe me. And um and then after after I translated it, it went to my German editor, who is a dear friend of mine from way back when, who taught German at the um, one of the credited classes at Georgian College in Barrie. So um, she read it. She audited, um, not audited it. Um, I'm not a, not into taxes at the moment anymore. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> she edited it and. Um, and give it back to me. And um, right now it's being formatted to by my publisher, my son, um, to go to Amazon and, and be published. Nice. And, That's and, amazing. Yeah. That's a true yeah. accomplishment again, right? Mm -hmm. um, does, does and I, do have, I do have a big German, um, I call it my German fan club. It's a German, I call it my German fan club, my German fan base. Um, with not just my my um, the family that I have left over there, like cousins, basically. There's nobody else who's left, but um, mm. but a few cousins who I'm close to, and also the many people I have met who speak German who are from Germany. Um, well, I'm, I've been traveling on my own because like the languages connect, mm -hmm. and um, and we've kept in touch via Facebook via. Well, basically Facebook. So there's a whole German contingency waiting for my German book to come out, which is kind of interesting and fun. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah. I have to leave. My bread is ready for its uh, shaping. I, oh, oh it's it's for your bread. That's been really <laughs> oh. lovely. Congratulations, oh, Bruni. And we will get together one of these days. Take care. Thank you, Bye -bye. Janet. Bye, Bye, you. Janet. Bye, Bye Janet. everyone. We will get together again one day soon, I hope. Oh, that would yeah. be nice. Thank Look, you. Anybody else read in different languages? No. Ooh. No. <laughs> no. You, do you read Welsh or what? No. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> 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 you read Gaelic. Yeah. Alana reads in Gaelic. There wasn't even a no, Welsh school in my town. <laughs> So, anyway. well, Chelsea, how many how many languages do you read in? Yes, um, good for you. I, oh, two, two. I read in obviously English, and I read in emojis. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Is, that like, is, is that like is that like wingdings? Yeah, like wingdings, right? Hey, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can translate for you, Bruni. Okay, there you go. okay. <laughs> well done. <laughs> no, truly, truly, that's a really, really good accomplishment. And I can't wait um, to share your German fan club um, to share with them what we did today. So as you can see, we're recording the session, we're going to put little tidbits of what we did today and the interview sessions um, on YouTube and, and share. Um, and I'm sure that the German fan club will love to see that of all of they us. They would here love to see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And they put their subtitles on the bottom. So it's perfect. Wow. <laughs> Are there subtitles on the bottom? No yeah. kidding. Yeah, you can. Yeah, for sure. In emojis. In emojis. Oh, <laughs> they <don't> understand that. <laughs> Should I make oh, an official it. language? No, it. <laughs> we should make that an official language. Yeah. <laughs> now, Bruni, do you have your book at the library? I do. Well, because I'm just looking it up here just to see, but it's not coming up as your book. It's It says it's A Touch of Paradise by Bruni, but then the title is Death, Hot or Cold, and it's a mystery. No. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's almost that. I must let them know. Yeah, it's coming up. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's coming up. I can't see it. Good totally heavens. Different. Sorry. Good heavens. Okay. Yeah, I, I just thought it. I'd mention it well, to thank, you because I just thank thought you I'd for mentioning. Me. Alana, thank you for mentioning it. I was, yeah, I just look it up on the library it. website, Bruni, because it's important they get it out there right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll get it sorted out. Don't worry. Yep. Yep. Uh -huh. Alana, thank you. <laughs> well, I did. I, yeah, I just thought I'd look it up and see because I thought it was going into the library, which is great. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. honestly, a local community author in our yeah. family is just fantastic. And we're, we're so proud of you, Bruni. Mm -hmm. Congratulations from all of us at the center and all of you guys at home. Thanks for joining us. And um, really, really appreciate it. If you guys need anything at all, you know where to find us. Give us a call. Give me an email. Um, we're here for you for whatever you need. And thanks for coming on today for Bruni's book release. You got it. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you, time. everyone, for being here. I know. It's so great to chat with you and see you and and. Uh...